the Oracle purchase of Cerner. So, you know, while Lena Khan is busy trying to fight with everybody about uh, whether or not you can self-preference products or whether or not you need to have open or closed ecosystems, um, you know, strong companies with big, stable balance sheets are able to continue to make acquisitions of big size and enter new markets successfully. By the way, no real anti-competitive that I can see here. I'm just saying that because this deal was huge and it went really fast. But yet we're, you know, scrutinizing the heck out of smaller deals right now because everybody thinks that big tech is evil. Um, I think that the entrance into a deeper healthcare offering, I, I kind of like it, Pat. So Oracle's got this whole, you know, it's got the Oracle, uh, it's got the OCI, it's got cloud products, it's got the platform itself, it's got, of course, all their apps in that CX business and their business applications, NetSuite. What I like here is. Everyone that knows this particular business of healthcare knows that the, you know, the Epic, Cerner, they suck. It's old, it's legacy. Um, a lot of it is HIPAA related. It's not all because these companies don't build good products. Companies build good products, but the, the compliance and regulation has made it incredibly difficult for them to build more user-friendly technology experiences. Um, with Oracle probably handling the data, for a vast majority or a huge percentage of the healthcare industry, um, you would think that there's an opportunity to vertically integrate and then horizontally build an ecosystem that could create a better healthcare experience while maintaining you know, HIPAA compliance, while maintaining data sovereignty, while maintaining um, fluidity and experiences that people will like better. So you know, you're talking about a $28 billion deal. You're talking about a nice net add to the top line for Oracle a huge entry. I mean, now compared to every other company, you know, we talk about, you know, these other companies, other companies have healthcare clouds. Oracle literally has one of the healthcare clouds now. I mean, they have the opportunity with Cerner to revolutionize healthcare. So it's pretty exciting. Of course, you know, the doubts are, do they have the domain expertise? Are they specialized enough in healthcare to add a lot of value through this acquisition? I think that's what we're going to wait and see. But I think Larry Ellison and Safra Kess, they're pretty methodical. I don't get the take that they're going to make a deal this big if they didn't feel very confident that they would be able to implement this in a way that was going to be growth driven and that somehow integrates in, in Larry's vision of being, you know, not just the third cloud or the fourth cloud, which is what where they're sort of generally considered by revenue, but taking the business potentially up to the first cloud. So who knows? Maybe the whole Cerner number rolls into that cloud number. I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but you know, all of a sudden that cloud number gets really big. Um, so uh, anyway, a strong deal. Uh, good to see a deal move this quickly and get closed and good to see the tech industry trying to get really big and aggressive on investing in vertical. Great analysis, Daniel. And I might do a one liner and then do just a mic drop. Some companies talk about vertical industry solutions and some make $30 billion investments to drive them forward. And that's exactly what Oracle has done here. They want to go big in healthcare. We're going to go where all the data is, right? And that's, you know, Cerner doesn't own the entire market, but their market share is deep double digits on, on what they do. And that's going to put Oracle front and center and add a layer on top of their database and data layer, which is on top of their OCI layer. And this is yet another step in the full stack capabilities of, of Oracle. And you know, Daniel, three years ago, you know, I wrote some pretty, um, pretty accurate, but negative things about Oracle. I mean, OCI Gen 1, I mean, did they have any customers? I mean, maybe. Uh, they did. Uh, their SaaS stuff wasn't necessarily taking off. In fact, uh, they were in the process of rebuilding their applications for the cloud. And to their credit, I mean, they brought out OCI Gen 2 uh, is very competitive and very cost effective. Their uh, fully uh, rewritten uh, enterprise uh, SaaS, uh, SaaS stack, and whether it's, you know, uh, ERP, uh, CRM, uh, sales, uh, whatever is very competitive to the point where, you know, they're taking business away from Salesforce. They're taking business away from, from SAP. 
And this is just, you know, I, I'm expecting Daniel some more acquisitions like a Cerner in some of their other important uh, uh, verticals. Could, could be some very interesting stuff in the future. Obviously, I'm speculating, uh, but aside from your great analysis, that that's what I'm yeah. left with. Like, are they going to buy Temenos next so they can take banking on? Or I don't know. It's it's interesting yeah. though where 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 it could go. But we talk about verticals and then we talk about verticals. This is big on vertical. This is not a vertical facade. This is you just bought a major player in the software vertical. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty crazy.